Hey guys, we're in the shop today with our Yamaha Blaster and we suspect that we have worn out axle bearings. So today we're gonna to be showing you how to inspect and replace your axle bearings. Now with these bearings, sometimes they can get dirt or water that seep into there and they can wear the bearing out or they could just be worn out from normal wear. So you wanna check those periodically and stay up on this maintenance item. Now with this, it's simple to do. So let's go ahead and get started. If you think your axle bearings are bad, you definitely wanna get those inspected. So one of the checks you can make is raise your rear wheels off the ground, rotate your axle, and if it rotates smoothly, it's good. If you feel any roughness or if it's hard to turn, then you know these bearings are bad. You wanna make sure that your brake rotor isn't bent and that your brakes aren't dragging. But as long as that's not happening, that's gonna verify that your bearings are bad. The other thing you wanna look for is any play in those bearings. So what you can do, again, with the wheels off the ground, try to rock your axle back and forth. If you see any play in the bearings, again, you wanna get them replaced. To do this job, you're going to need some common hand tools, including a torque wrench. Now you do need axle nut wrenches. So the axle nut is actually 50 millimeters in diameter. So you're going to need a wrench that fits that. You can find these on our website. Just make sure you type in your year, make and model to get the correct ones for your machine. Now, other than that, to remove the bearings, we're using a slide hammer with a 35 millimeter collet. If you don't want to use that, it might be a little harder, but you can use a hammer and punch. And then we're also going to be using a seal driver, bearing and seal driver. You're going to want some blue Loctite. And then we're also using safety glasses, rubber gloves, and some rags. To start out, you want to raise the rear wheels off the ground. If you're using a regular jack, just make sure you use a couple jack stands to help support your machine. Then we're going to remove both rear wheels. Next, you want to apply your parking brake. And then we're going to remove both hubs. So if you're not replacing the axle, then you're only gonna to have to remove this left side hub. So we'll get this cotter pin off of there. We've got our 22 millimeter socket. We're gonna use a breaker bar and your brake might not hold tight enough to break that bolt free. So what I'm gonna do also, I'm gonna use a pry bar to hold the hub in place. Or if you got a half inch impact, you can just buzz it off with that. But if you don't, that's how you're gonna do it. This should slide right off. They can get corroded, so you might have to work it off. And then, like I said, for our machine, we are removing the other hub as well. Now we need to loosen up both of the axle nuts. So these are 50 millimeter in diameter, and we just have the axle nut wrenches. We've got a few options on our website. And if you're not 100% sure which one to get, you can always type in what your machine is, and it's gonna let you know what you need. So I'm just gonna pull both wrenches together to loosen that up. So this inner nut is kind of gummy on ours, so I'm gonna torch it. If there's any Loctite in there, it's gonna melt it down and we'll be able to spin that off a lot easier. Next, if you have a bash plate or a guard underneath, you wanna get that removed. We don't, so our next step is to get the chain off the sprocket. So we're gonna loosen up our adjusters on our axle hub. So if you've got a mounting bolt on the top and the bottom, we'll just loosen those first and then the adjusters next. As you loosen these, it's a good idea to count how many turns on each one you do. And that way it's gonna be easier to set your chain tension. Now we're gonna push the axle as far as we can forward. That's gonna free up some slack in the chain. We should be able to remove it. We're gonna pull the chain to the inside of that sprocket. And then from here, you wanna remove your brake caliper. So we're gonna use a 12 millimeter socket to remove both of these bolts. So with those removed, we're gonna release the parking brake, and then we can remove the caliper. The next step is to remove your sprocket hub. So how we're gonna do that is by driving this axle through the axle hub, and you don't wanna hit directly on the end of the axle. You wanna cover that up, especially if you're gonna be reusing it. So you can do that with a socket or a pipe or whatever. So we're broken free. We can remove that sprocket hub. And then on the other side, we can just pull the axle all the way through. I'm gonna get the chain out of the way. And then we have these two mounting bolts. We're gonna remove those and take this axle hub over to the bench as well. Now over at the bench, we're gonna clean up the axle hub. We're gonna inspect this for any damage or any signs of cracking. So we have this cleaned up. We don't see any signs of damage. So I'm gonna put this in some soft jaws and I'm just gonna lightly clamp the housing in here. This is gonna help us be able to remove the bearings and the seals. 
So at this point, I can take my seal polar. We're gonna use a rag on this end of the housing just so we don't damage it. And we're gonna pry our seal out. So I'm gonna flip that over. I'll do the same thing on the other side. So that one was in there really good. Ended up having to work it out all the way around. And from here, what we're gonna do, first, first way we're gonna show you how to do this is with a 35 millimeter collet for a bearing puller. So I'm gonna install, install that onto the bearing and make sure the lip is all the way through to the other side. We'll tighten it down. And just so you guys know, this 35 millimeter collet, it's sold separately from the kits. You can find that on our website. And then uh, we're just gonna thread the tool in. And from here, you can just pull it out, but I'm gonna heat this up. So you can use a heat gun or a torch, whichever you prefer. And then underneath that, you're gonna have a collar. You wanna keep track of that. And then for the other side, I'm gonna show you another option. So if you want, you can use a punch. You're gonna stick it down in there. And you know, one of the reasons you use a blindside bearing puller, it's gonna be a little easier to get on the lip of the bearing, but you can put a punch in at an angle and then just simply punch the bearing out. So now that we have both the bearings out, I'm gonna remove this from the vise and I'm just gonna wipe it down and clean it up. And I'll put it back in the vise. Now, as I put the axle hub back into the vise, I'm actually having it supported a little bit by the vise itself. And that way, when we're driving the new bearings in, this isn't moving up and down and scratching the paint. So again, with this, we can heat this area up and then we're gonna drive the new bearings in with our bearing drivers. So this is just out of the Tusk kit. I'm gonna start with the 63 millimeter. I'm gonna make sure everything's squared up and then we're gonna move down to the 59 millimeter. And as we install these, I'm gonna have a little bit of grease on them as well. Now I'm gonna take the seal. You wanna apply some grease to the lip inside. As I drive these in, I always put just a little bit of grease on the outside. That's just gonna help it slide into place. And with the seal, we're going just below flush on the axle hub. And once you're flush all the way around, you wanna flip the axle hub over. The first thing we're gonna do is install our bearing. Just kidding. You need to make sure you install the spacer. This is super easy to forget. So make sure you get it in there. And with this, I don't want this knocking rust all over my new parts or that seal. So I'm gonna wipe this down as well. Now that we have the spacer in, we can install the remaining bearing and seal in the same way. Now that we have everything installed, we can bring this back over to the machine. Now we're at the machine, we're gonna reinstall the axle hub. And I'm gonna start by installing the top bolt first. Now, if you have any corrosion on this, you wanna clean it off. And we put a light film of grease on this so it doesn't seize in there. Make sure you have your washer on. Go all the way through. And we have the washer and nut on the backside. We're not tightening these down yet. Now on the bottom, you just wanna make sure that you remember to reinstall your adjusters. We're gonna make sure we have plenty of grease on the dust seals. We're also gonna put anti-seize on the splines of our axle. Now, if you have an O2 or older model, the splines for the brake hub, it's a good idea to use grease instead of this anti-seize because that is a floating hub. Now from here, if you have your stock axle, it's just gonna go back together the same way you took it apart. And as you slide the axle through, just make sure you're feeding it through the chain as well. And we're just gonna set that up and out of the way. From here, you can reinstall your sprocket hub, and make sure that you get the chain wrapped around it. And then also make sure that the collar is pushed all the way into the seals. Now, if you have a stock axle, you can go ahead and install these axle nuts. What you're gonna do is apply some blue Loctite to them and you're gonna tighten this, the inner one first. You're gonna to torque that to 40 foot pounds using the axle nut tool. Then again, Loctite on the second nut and you're gonna hold the inner one and torque this one to 140 foot pounds against it. 
once you've done that, you're going to hold the outer one and you're going to turn this one back and that's going to get torqued to 170 foot pounds. Now for anybody using a tusk axle, you've got the three piece lock nut. This inner piece on the lock nut, it's going to rotate and the C-clip is actually going to fit inside of here once it's on. So you need to make sure that this step in the inner piece is facing out towards the wheel. So we're going to go ahead and slide this on and just line up the splines. Now we can install the C-clip. Now before we get this tightened down all the way, what we need to do is install our brake caliper. After that, I'm going to use a gear jammer and my parking brake to make sure the axle doesn't move. And we're going to torque this down to spec. Now to get the correct spec on the nut, you want to make sure that the tool is 90 degrees to your wrench. Then we just need to rotate the axle until you can see the Allen bolt. You're going to remove that, then apply a little bit of blue Loctite to it or medium strength Loctite. And then you're going to reinstall it and torque it to 12 foot pounds. Next, install your wheel hub. You want to apply some anti-seize to the splines. And then you're going to have a washer on the stock axles. We don't, but you want to put your castle nut on and torque that to 87 foot pounds. After that, you want to make sure the tabs on the castle nut line up with one of the holes going through the axle. If it doesn't, you always want to tighten that nut until it lines up with the holes and you can get your cotter pin in. And then I'm going to install my wheel, torque the lug nuts to spec, and then we'll do all of those same steps on the other side. So from here, you want to set your chain tension. Now, once you get everything adjusted where you need it and both sides are even, the two axle hub bolts that are going all the way through, we're going to tighten down the nut side to 36 foot pounds. And then just don't forget to tighten down these jam nuts. And that's how you replace the axle bearings on your Yamaha Blaster. If you need any of the special tools or the bearings that we installed today, you can find those on our website. We offer free shipping on orders over $75. So go check that out. Now, if you have any questions about the install process, leave those down in the comments below. And if you wanna see more helpful content like this for your Blaster, subscribe to our channel. I'm Charles with Rocky Mountain ATVMC. Thanks for watching.